Welcome to a quick video tutorial for running SQL queries using the IBM Cloud APIs. The tutorial assumes that you have already familiarized yourself with the Object Storage Service and the Cloud SQL Query Service in the IBM Cloud Catalog. Running SQL queries from an application in the IBM Cloud is done in three major phases and in each phase we are using a different API of the IBM Cloud. In the following I will walk you in detail through those phases. But before we do that we first capture and set up a set of properties that we need for our application in order to talk to those APIs. One of these properties is an API key that we can use in order to authenticate our application when talking to the IBM Cloud. You can create such an API key in the IBM Cloud Console in Manage Security Platform API Keys. Launch the Create dialog, give the API key a custom name and press the Create button. In the following window, copy the API key to your clipboard and make sure you have done so before you close that window. Now we can set the API key into some variable that we will use later when we call the API. The next thing we are going to set up here for our little demo is the username and the password for another way of connecting and authenticating ourselves to the IBM Cloud. Further, we need to set up the cloud resource name, the so-called CRN, of the instance of the Cloud SQL Query instance in the IBM Cloud that we want to use for our queries. One way to identify this CRN is to open the details dashboard of the provisioned instance of the SQL query. And uh, you can just look it up in the URL parameter as you can see it here in the video. So we can just copy it from here and then paste it into variable for later use in our demo. The final set of properties that we need to configure is for the location of the SQL result that we want to write to Cloud Object Store. So this is the prefix, bucket and the endpoint name. In order to decide for those, we launch the uh, user interface of our Cloud Object Store from our uh, IBM Cloud console. In this UI we find the uh, menu point for endpoints, uh, where we are selecting that we want to have a regional endpoint in our case, and we can just copy it right away. In addition, we can browse our buckets and within the buckets the prefixes in order to decide for those properties. Now we are ready to set up our variables that hold the configuration for bucket name, prefix name and endpoint name. For our convenience, we also concatenate those together into a compound cos URL that you might already have seen in the Cloud SQL Query syntax. For the demo in this video I'm using a terminal session. For that purpose I'm just copying over the entire setup section here and running it as is in my terminal window. And now I could for instance check whether the concatenation of my cost URL has worked properly as expected and see what the variable holds. Now we are ready to go. So we are now starting our three phases. The first phase is the authentication to the IBM Cloud. I'm going to show you three different options how you can do this. Eventually you just have to select one of those options. The first option is to use an API key and in fact this is the recommended option. We are going to submit a POST request to the IAM token service and here is the API documentation uh, that you can use in order to understand more details of that API. The token creation is an endpoint that is part of the IEM token runtime service section in the documentation. The API reference also gives you a set of different language snippets for different client languages. In our case though we are specifically interested in the curl calls because we are going to use a terminal window. Now let's prepare our specific curl call to this post endpoint for the IAM token service. Uh, we need to specify the grant type in the parameters and we need to set it to API key as you can see it here. Further we need to specify the API key itself and 
we have actually set it earlier at the top of this screen here in a variable and now we can just reference this variable and off we go. So we submit this curl call now in our terminal and we are using some further shell tools here in order to parse out the returned OAuth token and for demo purposes here we are also printing it out on the screen so you have an idea how it looks like. An alternative mechanism to authenticate to the IBM Cloud is to use the user and password for programmatic authentication. If you can though, I still recommend you to use an API key instead, but I'm going to show you how it works if you're using user and password directly now. You can use this method if you have a direct sign up with the IBM Cloud. Um, it does not work if you have federated accounts where your enterprise user registry is just federated into the IBM Cloud. We are using again the IAM token service endpoint, but this time we are specifying a grant type of password ampersand username. Along with that, we are also providing the actual username and clear text password in the grant type parameter. So we are now copying over this command and running it in our terminal. And uh, we are also printing out the resulting of token so you can see the result is pretty much the same as if when you have used the API key. And finally the third option is one that you can use when your primary objective is indeed just to play around with the API from a terminal like we are doing it here in the demo. In this case you can retrieve such an access token interactively using the IBM Cloud console browser window. This approach uses uh, the IBM Cloud command line tool called BX. So you're required to download and install it in order to execute those steps. So let's take these commands here, copy it over to our terminal window and let's see what happens. And as you can see, we are asked to take forward this URL into a browser window in order to retrieve a one-time passcode that we can use here in the command line to authenticate. So let's do that and paste the URL into a browser. And what we are going to do here is now we are logging on interactively to the IBM Cloud console. And when this is done successfully, we are presented with a one-time passcode that is valid for a few seconds. So we copy and paste that over into our command line, into the BX tool, which then continues to authenticate us we merely have to select the account that we want to work with and then we can actually retrieve the bearer token, the OAuth token, as we have seen in the previous two approaches in the same way. So now I've actually authenticated myself three times in this terminal window and I'm just selecting the first token here to be used for the following actions. With that, we have now finished successfully our first phase and we are continuing with the next one, which is the submission of the SQL itself. We are using the SQL API SQL jobs endpoint in order to submit our query. Uh, part of this endpoint is a URL parameter, which is the instance CRN, the cloud resource name, that if you remember, we have set earlier into a variable above in the script. So we can just reference it here. Further, we are using uh, the access token that we have retrieved in the previous phase in order to prove to the SQL API that we ha are an authenticated user to the IBM Cloud. We are also specifying the SQL statement text, in this case a very simple select star from one of the sample data sets. And finally, we are specifying the result set target parameter where we are just using the concatenated cost URL that we have set up uh, previously. One of the return parameters of this call is the job ID for the SQL query and we are using uh, a shell utility in order to pass it out for later usage. So let's take this command and run it in our terminal window. The return is the job ID and we are printing it here out on the screen so you can verify that we have a valid job submission. As a next step, we are now using uh, a get call to 
the SQL jobs endpoint with the job ID as this will return us the status of the query and we can find out whether and when it has completed. We can specify the job ID to this call by using the capture job ID from the previous call. Again, we also need to specify the instance CRN as well as the access token. When we run this command, we get back a response very quickly and it just tells us whether this job ID exists and what's the status of it. In our case it has already completed, but it could well be that it's a long-running SQL, so it might take a couple of time. And in this case you just run this call until you see the status completed. So this finishes our second phase, and now we can proceed to the final phase, which is reading the result. To accomplish this we use yet another API of the IBM Cloud. It's the API of the Cloud Object Storage. Here you can see where you can find the documentation. Go to the IBM Cloud Console, the Documents section, and just type Cloud Object Store API, which basically brings you to a set of hits, and the one that talks about the Cloud Object Storage API, just open that one in order to find out the reference. So we scroll down here to the API reference, and what's interesting to us are actually two sections, the bucket operations and the object operations. The bucket operations provide us a way to list objects within the given bucket, and that's what we want to do first. And it's basically a get call to a URL that comprises the uh, endpoint that we have set up earlier, the bucket name, as well as the prefix name. We now also need to append to this prefix the job ID equals job ID because this is how SQL query is going to write SQL results to the configured target prefix. Now don't forget the access token as usual. And as you can see we also are doing some further shell utility parsing here just in order to figure out exactly the object name that had been written that contains the result data by the previous query. When we take this forward now to our terminal window and run it, we can see exactly the object name that we need to read in order to look at the result data. So finally we are doing exactly that. For this purpose we are using yet another endpoint of the Object Store API. Uh, it's part of the object operations and it allows us to do a get to this object name in order to retrieve it, to basically download it. So we had captured the object name in the previous command, so we can just use it here for constructing this target this URL to, for the get endpoint. And then we are passing the result, which is downloaded through a set of further shell utilities, just to do some pretty column-wise printing and pagination using the last utility. So let's try it out and run it and we get a nice view of the results that had been written by the query that we had submitted in a previous call and we can verify whether our query does what we want and continue with our application programming. This finishes our third phase and also concludes this demonstration. Thank you very much for your attention and have fun trying this yourself.